please welcome Kevin Nash. Actress and co-writer Christy Bruce. Actress and co-writer Shane Bruce. We'll let you guys have a seat. Thank you. Did you like the movie? <laughs> Very powerful. So I can start taking some questions from the audience now. Everyone's catching their breath, I think. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, uh, the question is, why was the film shot in the 4-3 perspective? I was, I was going to screen. I was going to let the actors and, and co-writers answer that, but they gave me instructions. If anybody asks a question about the format, you, I have to answer it. Uh, so the, the, the reason for it was basically because we feel it's a story about people who are boxed in, um, in a very claustrophobic environment that their, their, their lives are in many ways constrained and contained um, and, and they can't escape. And it's about trying to find a way out of that. And so we felt, um, the director of photography and I, that, that that kind of format would work well. We'd both, both Luke, Lucas, my director, of brilliant director of photography uh, um, and I had, were both great fans of, are both great fans of a French Canadian director called Xavier Dolan who had, um, we just seen a film called Mummy which was actually shot in a square frame and I think that had a big influence on us. Uh, please remember you can also tweet your questions at hashtag SBFF. Uh, another question from the audience. Yes, ma'am. That's so the, kind. Thank you so much. Just um, to repeat the question, the question is about casting and how everyone seems so perfect cast. Please. Thanks again. That was lovely. Thank you. Um, so basically, um, Kevin and I and Harriet, who played Scarlett, had all worked together on a short film um, previously. And when we came up with Waking David, it was a largely improvised film. Um, so we brought in a few actors, people we knew or had worked with previously, and would go through a series of improvisations with them. And um, basically, when performances worked together, we sort of latched onto that and would just work with those actors exclusively. Um, so it was quite an organic process, really, of working together and finding the people who we felt we could build a proper story with. Can I just add that I was in that process as well. I'm a co-writer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. And actually, I was wondering, would you care to tell them how long this process took? One and a half years. But um, it was incredibly fun. Um, so it wasn't one and a half years, 365 days a year. We did do it on and off for about four hours at a time, um, maybe four days a week more if we could, less if we were tired. But um, it was, yeah, it was quite an intense process, but really fun. Yes. <laughs> oh, uh, we had our moments. <laughs> More questions? No more questions? This can't be. Yes, ma'am. So the question was about the kind of claustrophobic, claustrophobic use of close-ups, and was it intentional? Again, yes, I think that was um, that that was a, what, um, the theory behind that, or the idea behind that, and and also um, 
we were working in a very, in, in, the, in the apartment where we were shooting this film, we were working in incredibly tight uh, space. Uh, it, it's hard to believe because the house kind of looks quite big. It's a two-story house, but actually there were, what, three or four people living in it, including Christy at that time. Yeah. And uh, we had to shoot in a very short time, well, not short, but we had to be in and out, you know, before people came back from work. And we had very little room to maneuver, so we were using very tight cinematography and a shooting style to match. We also had a question from Twitter, uh, which was actually for Harriet, but I'll, I'll let one of you try to answer for her about the American accent. Was it difficult for her to do the American accent? No. <laughs> she was really good at it. Yes, sir. Uh, the question is, what sparked the idea? Do you want to elaborate what you mean by that? that I, as far as the whole theme of the movie, what, what, was, what sparked that idea? Well, um, it started off, we wanted to tell a story, I think about a, a family. And um, it started off with some different, completely different ideas, really. And then it sort of evolved through this whole secrets and what would happen if you were to keep this secret that just like burn within you sort of came about through the improvisation process. And then we just sort of wrote the script based on those sorts of things. Um, yeah. Do you care to add anything to that? No. Um, <laughs> She's a real talker. <laughs> it, it, it also, um, just, to, just to explain a little bit more about the improvisation process, the script was improvised, the film shoot was not improvised. And the starting point, which was a little bit similar to the way that Mike Lee works, was to start with characters. Um, which is, I think, why, I, I hope at least, why um, you, you get the impression these characters really are, are very alive and real. Because Christy, Shane, Harriet, and, and then uh, the, the other actors too, develop their own characters. And we started with the characters before we started with the story. And so, um, the, 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 I, once we'd found these characters, then we, tried, we talked a lot about what kinds of situations would bring them together. Yes, sir. Uh, girl's bedroom was decorated like she was still a young girl. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that was done by design, but what was the reason behind that? The question is why was, uh, I can't remember the character's name, why was Christy's bedroom, Amy, yes. Amy's <laughs> bedroom, decorated uh, like she was still a young girl? Um, that, that really was, um, that was a, a design and cinematographer choice um, and, and with, with my absolute blessing. It was, the idea was to create this one corner of the house where sort of time stood still. There was a sort of fantasy element, a surrealistic element even, where, um, you know, this film is about going back in time and uh, it, it's almost as if that's, that's, that's where things happened uh, a long time ago and, and we're freezing time and so we had these sort of shocking pinks and actually our DP wanted them to be even pinker and, and, and more um, fantasy-like and I think that was, you know, that was what we were thinking of there. So. Yes, in the back there. I think most of you heard that, but the question was about the, the music and uh, the origin of it for the film. It was very beautiful and effective music. Sorry, it was very music. Yeah, what was it was music? beautiful and effective oh, and okay. everything else. Yeah, we, um, we talked a lot about music in the film, obviously, to we, we tried to use the music only to link scenes, um, not to underscore anything. And one of the um, one, one of the reasons why that music is, is very powerful is because we only used a string quartet. I'd always wanted uh, to make a film with chamber music element, not, not an orchestra. And so, and I think the rawness of a, string, of a string quartet, that kind of visceral sound, guttural sound almost, is, is, can be very powerful. And... Um, 
you know, he, he used it to link, our, our composer Roly used it to link these scenes. And um, sometimes it is mysterious and sometimes it offers a little hope, I hope, you know. So I have a question for Shane, since she's not talking very much right now. So Christy, I know, has done a lot of TV and, and movies, but uh, Shane doesn't have that much of that in her credits. So could you tell us how you came to this movie? Okay. <laughs> um, I only trained as an actor um, a few years ago. So I hadn't done a lot. Um, I'd done some theater. But basically, it was part-time because I work for a living. My daughter, <laughs> who, who is very successful and has a long CV, um, suggested me for this new project um, because, as she said previously, she'd worked with Kevin. And she said, Mum, come along and audition. And I did, and somehow Kevin liked me. I don't know why. Yes, ma'am. Was there any one character that was more difficult to write than another? I've got started now. You can't right, start say at the same time and say the same one. One, two, three. Helen. Oh, you didn't say anything. No. It was Helen. <laughs> Personally. I, 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 don't, I disagree, dear. Because... That's me told. Because um, with the process, um, when we first started, it was the four of us. And then as um, the idea grew and as, um, you know, we got the synopsis and the, and the idea, we found that these three other characters came into it. And I think that those characters started to grow anyway. I don't think that Helen was any more... I think personally, obviously, because fight now. There were, there were a few. Um, obviously, there was. It was a collaborative effort with writing between myself, Harriet, um, Kevin, and my mum. But um, I personally found Helen quite difficult to write for because she's quite an overbearing character, and there was the danger of making her become too overbearing and deciding where that was and everything like that. But I suppose it's different for each of us, which is why it was so good to have a collaborative effort to know where where some people may have found it more difficult to write for someone, others may have found it easier, which made the whole process much nicer. We have time for one more question. Yes. So the question is about the uh, confined space you were filming is in, did you use a handheld camera for that? Yeah, we, we, we went very light. We used a relatively light camera, and it was all handheld all the way through the whole shoot. Thank you very much, Kevin Nash, Christy Bruce, Shane Bruce. Um, and a huge thank you to Stony Brook, who the Stony Brook Film Festival, actually, I must say, is amazing. It's been so welcome. You've been fantastic, everyone. You're a lovely audience. You're all wonderful. Yeah. Alan Kent, thank you all so much. Thank you.